Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials here on Facebook. If you're joining us on YouTube, please be sure to come join our Facebook group where all of our videos air live before they're added to our YouTube channel unedited. And of course, if you're catching us live on Facebook, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Those links are in the video description depending on where you're watching. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sublimate a 20 ounce perfectly straight skinny tumbler in a convection oven using shrink wrap. If you didn't catch our video earlier this week, I showed you how to set up a design for a skinny tumbler using a licensed graphic. We'll be doing a couple of different tutorials on how to design skinny tumblers as well as um, different methods and different style tumblers that you can sublimate. I have been wanting to do this tutorial for a while and like many of you, I was a little bit nervous. I finally decided to try skinny tumblers at Christmas time and I was amazed at how easy they are and honestly, they're really awesome. I absolutely love that full bleed look and they make a really good profitable product because you can easily resell them for a minimum of $30 all the way up to $40 if you happen to be doing custom designs or personalization as well. When you receive your tumbler, typically it comes in a box, which is great, makes a nice professional product. You can just stick your logo sticker on there and send it out to your door to your customer. You should be getting a straw. Um, this is a metal straw. I purchased my tumbler from JC's Vinyl Supply and Blanks here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. They do offer shipping and right now I think that they have one of the best priced skinny tumblers that I've seen. If you you get quantity discounts and if you order a case which is 30 of them i believe it's 7.99 per tumbler so i feel like that's a really great deal especially because i can pick it up locally so i've been really happy with their tumblers this is what they look like for those of you who haven't seen them so when you receive them you'll have the straw the box this rubber bottom that you will put on after you sublimate it your top which has a little sliding mouthpiece and a nice rubber sealed ring and then your double walled aluminum tumbler that is white all the way around now skinny tumblers are all the rage right now you've probably noticed that they are popping up everywhere and they have been hard for some suppliers to keep in stock that is the sign of a really great item i think what's so great about them besides the fact that they're just a high quality item that you can sell for a high profit is that they're really quick and easy to do. You're gonna see in our demo today that it honestly takes no time at all and there is no reason to be afraid. There are a few things to remember to help you get seamless results every single time, which we'll cover. Now, there are a lot of sellers who offer Now, there are a lot of suppliers that offer sublimation skinny tumblers, so you really can choose to purchase them from wherever you would like. I do recommend um, always reading reviews and being cautious, especially if you're ordering online from someone who is not an established seller, simply because not all skinny tumblers are the same. Um, I personally have only ordered them from Single J Sublimation Buy-Ins or these ones that I got from JC's Vinyl Supply and Blanks. So these are the two places that I buy them 100% of the time because I know that both offer top-notch quality, reasonable shipping, and reasonable prices on their tumblers. So the link to purchase these from JC's Vinyl Supply is in the video description. As I mentioned, I live local to them, so it's really convenient to be able to just pop over and pick them up, but I've been so happy with the quality um, and I will definitely keep on ordering them simply because of the convenience, but also because it's a great price point, especially when you're looking to resell. So we're gonna start by measuring our skinny tumbler. Before you ever print a transfer, you should always be measuring your substrate, especially for something like a skinny tumbler if you're doing a print all the way around. Now, even though they are typically said to be a general size range, it does not mean it's gonna be exact every time. And if you happen to have missed a post I made recently, I noted that out of this case of tumblers that I got, I was doing, it was a case of 30 and I was printing 24 of them. And out of the 24 that I had out, there were three different heights. Now the height might only be off by a quarter of an inch, 
eighth of an inch difference from one to the next. But if you're trying to print a full bleed design, you definitely want to make sure that your print reaches the whole top rim so that you have that nice full color. So we'll start by measuring this, then we'll resize our design in Affinity Designer and get it printed, trim it, wrap, and go ahead and bake this in our convection oven. So let's go ahead and turn things around so we can get started. There are two measurements that we want from our tumbler. The first is gonna be the height from the bottom to the top. And then the second is going to be the circumference. The best way to do this is with a cloth or paper tape measure since it's flexible. If you don't have a tape measure and struggle with reading a tape measure, I have provided a link to a free downloadable printable paper tape measure. It is a PDF file that you can print off and it has each of the lines marked as well as the decimal point equivalent. So we're going to go ahead and measure right across there and it looks like we are at eight. You guys can see that. It looks like we are at eight and one eighth. And then we'll go ahead and wrap this around. It's really important to make sure you get it straight. So honestly, if you do it at the top, that way you can just line it up with the top edge, you'll be able to get the most accurate reading to which we have nine and one quarter. So these are the measurements that we're gonna to use to print off our transfer. And with those, we should be able to get a nice full bleed and we should have a very thin seam line. Your goal is always to get your measurements as exact as possible so that when you print off your transfer, you will have that nice even seam that's just, just a fine line. So I'm gonna show you guys that as well. So let's go ahead and pop over to our computer and print off our design with Affinity Designer. As always, we're going to be working in Affinity Designer on our Windows laptop. We're going to start by opening up a new file that is set to the page size that we plan to print on. Based on our measurements of 8 and 1 8 by 9 and a quarter, our design will fit perfectly on a letter size piece of paper. So we'll go ahead and hit, we'll hit File, New. We'll click on this Print tab and we'll be able to choose from different preset sizes. There's letter size for us. We want to make sure our color format is an RGB slash 8 with the sRGB IEC profile. We'll hit create. And now we're going to import our graphic and size it accordingly. So we'll do that by clicking on the place image tool or you can go to file and then place. If you missed our tutorial the other day, we're going to be using one of these designs I showed you how to take a design that you have already created or purchased and add to it so that you can use it on different substrates. It's a really great way to get kind of the most out of something that you create. So we're using this difference maker design. So I'm going to go ahead and select that from our tutorial the other day. And you can click to drop it in or click and drag. We look over here on our measurements and we can see that it's a bit bigger than what we need for our tumbler. So I'm going to hit that lock aspect ratio. You always want to make sure to do this so that your proportions remain the same and you don't end up skewing your design. We will go ahead and go with the height, which we determined to be eight and one eighth inches. So the decimal version of one eight is 0.125. So we'll do 8.125. And it has adjusted to 9.222. Now, when we measured it, it was nine and a quarter. That's 9.25. Now, this is close, but it's not exact. If your height of your design is a little bit larger, that's okay because it will just, you know, wrap inside of the tumbler. It's not such a big deal. Your width, though, needs to be 100% correct so that you don't end up with a white line. So I'm just going to go ahead and bump that right up to 9.25 inches. And then since it doesn't fit on our page in this orientation, we will just make sure we have that selected in our layers panel. Hit that rotate button. 
center on our page. And just like that, we are ready to print. We're gonna go file and then print. Choose our workforce 7710. I'm gonna click on properties. and go ahead and I already have my preset set for my printer. Now your presets might be different than mine. Uh, the presets in terms of your color settings and if there's a specific profile, like an ICC profile, that's all gonna be dictated by the ink that you're using. The only thing that for sure is always gonna be the same is that you want to make sure that you are printing your design mirrored. So if we click on the more options tab, you'll see that mirror image is checked. So always make sure you are mirror, mirroring your image on any substrate that that is necessary. Skinny tumblers would be one of them. So I've got my preset already done. And if you don't know how to set your presets, just select all of your settings that you would like and click on add remove presets. And when you do, this little pop-up will come and you can name it and choose an icon. All right, so we'll hit okay. And okay, and this will send this off to print. We have our transfer today printed with our Workforce 7710 using printer jack ink and paper, the pink formula. Now, before you trim this, you always wanna double check to make sure it does actually fit your skinny tumbler. So you can do that just by setting your tumbler on your page and pulling it up and just peeking to see if those lines, your edges of your design line up. So it looks like we're pretty good there. You can always print on regular copy paper if you're concerned about wasting um, sublimation paper. But if you've done your due diligence to measure your skinny tumbler like we talked about, then your print should be sized accordingly. So you're gonna go ahead and you wanna make sure you cut off the extra white of your page, especially on this where the seams are gonna meet. Now I'm just using a guillotine paper cutter from Walmart. I have several of these, but this one is a 12 inch one and is perfect for today's project. So we're gonna go ahead and just line that up, trim it really quick. One of my little tricks is if you kinda push down on the edge of the page to make sure that you're lined up with that blade. It's particularly important when you're doing a project like this where you wanna make sure that you get off any extra white now i did see that there's a little bit right there that i did not quite get so i'm going to trim that with scissors because that's just going to be the easiest way just give me one second no, the reason why you want to make sure even that faint little white line, even though it's so small, is trimmed off is because you don't want that to appear on your tumbler. Your goal when you line up those edges of the pages is that you just have a very faint overlap that should be the color of your background. And this is the part that a lot of people struggle with is getting that seam line. You're always going to have a seam. It's just going to be, ideally, it's just going to be a really, really faint one. It is very difficult to make it look like it does not have a seam at all. So I'm just going to make that super clear. Because I see some people who are really hoping that it's going to have absolutely, um, who are really hoping it's going to have absolutely no line. And that is, I don't know, I don't want to say it's not realistic, but it's very difficult to achieve. A lot of the tumblers that you see that are like that, they are done UV printed, which is a different type of process. And that's why they're able to get that completely seamless overall look. Now, the type of printing that you're doing is with sublimation is designed to last a lot longer. So that's something you have to consider as well. Okay. So I got this trim. So I'm going to move our paper cutter out of the way. And we have our transfer. 
we are going to need some heat tape, a piece of shrink wrap, our tumbler, a heat gun, heat gloves for when we're done, and a razor blade. So the first thing we wanna do is place our design on our tumbler. Now, my preferred method of doing this is to set my tumbler in the middle, roll up one edge, and then pull up the other. Now, if you've done your measurements and everything, it should have just a slight overlap. Let's see if I can pull that up. It's so fine that if I don't make sure that it's overlapped just right, the pages might not even meet up. That is how you know you've done a good job with your measuring and your trimming. I'm just gonna try and hold this so I can show you the bottom. The biggest mistake I see people make is that their transfer extends over this lip that's here. Now when that happens, when the shrink wrap compresses this, it's gonna cause all of this paper along the edge to wrinkle, that's not what you want. You wanna make sure that you are right on, right on that line that you see there. That's the line between the bottom of your tumbler and where it starts to curve inwards. So I'm gonna hold that down. We're gonna stick a little piece of heat tape there to secure our transfer. And then we'll just go ahead and tape the rest of it. Now it's perfectly fine if your transfer is a little bit longer on the top. You just don't want it longer on the bottom where it'll end up wrinkling, like I said. I prefer to tape, tape the entire seam. And the reason why I do this is because it's really easy for it not to have consistent pressure and you to get uneven pressure lines if you don't. So just kind of keep holding it with one finger and pulling the other side to get everything lined up nicely. Oops. Don't let go of it like I just did there. Okay, so we got our seam all taped down. You'll notice that your transfer does still slide. So if you need to make some adjustments, you can do that. Now, in regards to that, I'm going to be using shrink wrap today. I've seen people use masking tape, use a whole bunch of heat tape, a lot of different options out there. I personally don't like making things take longer and be more work than they are. So I have gotten shrink wrap from only sublimation suppliers. And I always recommend that you guys purchase from companies that you know specifically sell sublimation blanks simply because if you have a problem, you have someone to help you. This is very different from obviously if you buy something random like shrink wrap off Amazon and uh, find yourself having an issue with it. Now, this shrink wrap is also from JC's Vinyl Supply, but I have tried shrink wrap from Coastal, um, Shelby Crawley, and from Single J Sublimation. So I've bought them from several different companies. What I like about the shrink wrap from JC's Vinyl Supply is that it is the exact size for your skinny tumbler. So I think that's great. What I dislike about it is also that it's the exact size for your skinny tumbler because you have to get it sliding on just right. So here's the trick to doing that. So it's creased like this when you get it. So you're just gonna kind of pull it out and rub your finger on that crease and then do the same thing on the other side and the other crease. Okay, so now you kind of get it so it's a little bit more cylindrical so you can slide it on. Now there's one more thing that I find I have to do with this and that is I make sure that I've got my transfer lined up the way I want it there on the end so that we don't get that warbly look that we don't want. Okay and then I do actually if I'm using this shrink wrap I put another piece of tape and make sure that my tumbler is or my transfer is taped in place and the reason why I do this is because when we slide that um, the shrink wrap over, your, your transfer could shift. And we're gonna double check that anyways. But now that we got this, just slide right on there just like that. And we're gonna carefully, oh, we're stuck on something. Okay. 
I'm gonna carefully slide herself through. I pulled it out on the other side because I just wanna make sure that I do have my transfer where we want it. And we'll double check on the bottom. Yep, we're still in line. That's what's most important. Okay. Now we just need to hit this with our heat gun for just a few seconds. Um, this is just a really cheap, low quality heat gun from Amazon. The link is in the video description. I use this for a lot of projects. So the main thing you want to start is by focusing on those edges. So I start at one, then go through and get that center. And you don't need to have this super melted. You just need to get it shrunk down enough to start tightening up around your design. As you can see, it doesn't really take very long. Really focus on that edge of, the, of your tumbler. Okay. And now I'll do that bottom edge. All right. So that just took us about 20 seconds, right? So we've got it pretty tight. I mean, you can see it's still got some wrinkles and stuff. It's not super tight. It's just enough to get it sealed in. And we made sure that we got our edges as good as we can. And now we're going to go ahead and stick this in our convection oven. I like to make sure that the seam is down. The crease in our um, shrink wrap actually lines up with the seam where the tape is. So that's fine. I always put mine down. I have actually done this. Oops, let me. Let me lower so you guys can see. There. Now I have done tumblers in this Black & Decker convection oven two different ways. I've done it by taking the metal grate out and having them stand up in, the, in between those two heating elements. And I've also done it just by laying it down in there. I don't do any kind of rotation. Both methods work. I actually prefer the laying down because I'm less likely to burn my hand. Um, on the top heating elements. Now this is just a toaster oven that I had that I used to use for food. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in there. I can do three at a time, either method here. I have mine on 400 degrees. I recommend that you, if you are not sure if your temperature is correct, get an oven thermometer. And I'm just gonna pull up our timer here and we're gonna do six minutes. Set that there so we can see it. Okay. So as this is baking, you're gonna to start to see that the shrink wrap is going to pretty quickly within the first 60 seconds, it's gonna to start to tighten up in all of the areas that we didn't have it quite tight enough. When you're applying shrink wrap, you really are just trying to get it to that point where um, it's nice and tight, but it will finish off the job in that first, first little bit of time in the convection oven. Now, I personally have never had an issue using shrink wrap. I've seen some horror stories in our group, sub that, about people having it melt and stick to their oven. Um, I don't know what, what causes that or what the difference is, but this is just another reason why I always recommend purchasing from companies that are reputable suppliers, because then you can go back to them and be like, hey, I bought your product. I paid good money for it. And it didn't work. I had these problems. Can you please help me? Um, you know, and that level of customer service is, of course, important. Now, in terms of selling your skinny tumblers, a lot of people question about what's a good price range. And I believe that you can sell these for a minimum of $30. I think that if your regular retail value is $30, that means that you leave room in your profit margin for you to be able to offer wholesale and bulk discounts which is definitely a good idea. If you uh, search our group, you'll see that we've had quite a few people that do sell these in volume. Um, I personally just did an order of them that I sold at a volume discount for a coffee shop that they are gonna be able to resell. So I was still able to offer them a really fair price and make my profit, and they were able to do theirs as well. In terms of what is a good wholesale rate to offer them at, I personally do that I'm, when I set wholesale rates on something like this, I factor in several things, one of which is what is a case count. So my wholesale rule is that they have to order what's in a full case so that I'm not stuck with leftover inventory taking up space and so that it is most cost effective to ship. So my minimum would be 30 and it has to be ordered in quantities of 30. 
for these, since that's how many comes in a case. And then a good rule of wholesale is two to two and a half times your total cost. That can be a little difficult with tumblers like this, um, just because there is only so much of an end resale value that people can charge for them. So I sold them for $20 each, which is right around the two times the cost mark. Um, our iPad went out. And then they're going to be able to resell them for 35. So they'll be able to make their profit. Even though we say that like the rule of wholesaling and reselling and determining your prices is dictated as two and a half times up to four and a half times your costs, the reality of it is, is we do still have to be conscious of what people are willing to pay and what the price point is in our, in our industry um, and for the target customer base. So let's see how much time we got left. We got two minutes and 37 seconds. And if you haven't tried skinny tumblers, I really do recommend them. I do promise I will do another tutorial on how to do the ones that are slightly tapered. I have several of those here and I've seen a lot of questions regarding them. Um, I definitely think doing the ones that are perfectly straight is a lot easier and a lot less stress. Now, once this comes out, you have a few options. You can go right ahead and peel it, which is a lot of times I only give it a minute to cool off and then I peel it. Some people like to let them cool completely. It's completely up to your discretion. This is not like doing a coffee mug where if you um, don't make sure the transfer is staying on there, you might end up with bleed. Ceramic holds heat uh, a lot longer than something like this does. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Um, I would love to see some projects that you guys have done with skinny tumblers. I know a lot of people have been asking for this specific tutorial. And I was a little afraid to do it, I'm not gonna lie. I see a lot of people who say that they're intimidated by them too, but once I did it, I couldn't believe how easy it was. <laughs> and then they're so addicting. So I know that anyone who hasn't tried it is definitely gonna think that they're addicting once they do. And as you saw from this process, there's really not a whole lot involved. Just make sure you measure and size your transfer accordingly. Don't, you know, go post in a group saying, what size should I print this? Because it's probably not going to be correct. Um, and as long as you follow these few basic steps, you're going to end up with your perfect skinny tumbler, hopefully. All right, we got just about 40 seconds left. I'm gonna go ahead and put my heat glove on to take it out of there. Oh, another thing I like about this shrink wrap that I forgot to mention is the shrink wraps open on both ends. Um, I think it's the one that I got from Coastal Business. It's actually not open on both ends. And I found that a little bit more difficult to work with. I had less consistency with my results. Okay, so just got move that out of the way. Just gonna reach in and pull this out. I usually grab it by the shrink wrap because you know it is still actually hot. You can here, I'll turn you guys down now. So we'll give this just a minute to cool. We don't really have to give it very long. I'm gonna switch my glove. Now what I do. Even if I wait till it's cold, I take the razor blade and I run it down where our tape line is. I find that you, you don't want to go too hard. You want to go just enough to break that shrink wrap. I guess I need the other glove on since we're peeling this hot. As you can see, it comes right off. I know it has a little uh, perforation. I'm sorry, that perforation is a joke. It does not work. Every time I try and do it, I just end up having to do this in like strips, which is very annoying. And then give it another gentle cut. You just wanna make sure you don't end up cutting into your 
um, into your tumbler. Oops, I did not use quite enough pressure there. There we go. And dun -dun. All right, let's get all of our mess out of the way. All right, let's see how we did. There is our design. It looks gorgeous. There's our seam. Just like I said, you've just got, there's a little bit, there's a hair on there. We've just got this nice, fine seam which is exactly how you want it to line up. You want just, if I can get it really close. Okay, see how you can see the tiny little bit of overlap? That's all we got. So there is our skinny tumbler and it's already cooled down quite a bit. These cool down pretty quickly. All right, so once it's cooled down, you can put your little piece on the bottom. You've got this rubber bottom with the 3M adhesive. Now, the easiest way to do this is to, I usually peel it off and then kind of slide it into one part of the curve and then kind of carefully make sure I get it in. Give it a little press and then go ahead and stick our lid on. And just like that, this is ready to be boxed up. I'm going to give this as a gift for someone. So, yep, slide it right on in the box. And the straw is actually a little taller than the box. I like to just take the straw on the outside, but some people slide it in and then close it. You can really do either or. So my preferred is to tape it to the side, just like this. And then you can go ahead and stick your sticker for your business right on the front. And you can put your care instructions right on the back. Um, these are supposed to be hand wash only, but I do know people who put them in the dishwasher just as all things, but you should always recommend wash before, wash before use, hand wash only. Do, obviously do not microwave or put in the oven because uh, it's metal. <laughs> and also you have to be cautious of that seal. So that is how to sublimate a skinny tumbler using shrink wrap in a convection oven. As I mentioned, our skinny tumblers and our shrink wrap came from JC's Vinyl Supply located here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. They do ship. Uh, they have great quantity discounts. I highly recommend them. I'm using our Black & Decker toaster oven from Walmart. That link is in the video description as well. And in this design that we did, we created in our tutorial the other day, which you can find that link as well. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thank you so much for joining us. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.